Today we will learn about layout groups and how you can use them to organize your UI and make them responsive across all aspect ratios. So first thing I'll show you is we've got these sprites here and they're all a bit unorganized. So I'm going to click on my parent um, of the sprites and I'm going to attach a horizontal layout group. Now, as you can see, that automatically sorts them in a horizontal line. Um, I'll go through the features here. First, we'll start with child alignment. Uh, right now, the alignment is pinned up against the top left. So for this scenario, I would like it to be in the middle center, just so to ensure that it's always going to be right in the middle of my parent, no matter how big or small I make it. So what we've got here are ways to manipulate the child objects uh, to be best fit your needs. Now, it can get a little bit complicated, uh, but I'll let you know what they all do. So control child size will allow you to, basically the, the child elements will always squish down to ensure that they'll fit in the container. But if you'll notice, they don't actually expand to fit the container. For that, you'll need to click on force child expand. And then they'll start, they'll start going, uh, they'll, they'll fit regardless of, of how big. Now, I only recommend doing this if the elements in your, in your group don't have a specific aspects ratio that they need. For example, if, if they're just square boxes or if you're using them for like a health bar or something, that, that will be fine. Uh, but for these, they obviously, they obviously can't be stretched. So I'll turn that off. Uh, another thing that you can do is say I don't want my Snorlax here to be affected by the parents layout group um, in terms of its of its size. So what you could do is you could go on a child component and you could add a layout element. Now this basically gives you overrides and the first one is ignore layout group. So I can actually, even though that it's still a child of this horizontal layout group, I can pull it out and it can become his own unit. Uh, so I'll turn that off. Now here I can say min width and min height. Okay, and we can set it to like that or anything like that. Oh, it was chunky. All right. So now when we change this, he just ignores the, the parent and what it wants to do. So that can be good for uh, numerous things. I'll go through what these do in the last section of this tutorial. So in the same way that we've got this horizontal layout group, we can, oh, and also the padding. So we can add extra padding on the left or the right just to, so, so that, that could be handy if, uh, if, for example, you've got a sidebar and you wanted a little bit of space up the top or something, um, you could just, you could add a little bit of top padding like that. So in the same way that we've got this horizontal layout group, we can remove that and we can make it a vertical layout group. And this will react in the exact same way as you'd expect. It's just uh, on the on the on the Y plane now instead of the, the X. Yeah, we can control the size of them and it didn't look too good, did it? Uh, yeah, just like that. Next, I will show you a way to create a so for example, you want a UI where you've got a sidebar on the left, maybe an info bar on the right, and then you've got your, your main menu content. So it could be like selecting a world or, or your options pane or something where you've got like a master detail view. So let's do a, um, let's call this split and we'll make this the full canvas size. And then we'll add an image. So let's call this left and let's give this a nice color like that Call this one middle and color this one pink and this one can be right and we'll color this one yellow so now on our split let's do a horizontal layout group and we'll control the sizes so that they expand and now say we only want these side ones to take up a little bit of space and we want this middle one to always expand as much as it possibly can to fill the remaining space. So what we can do is we can add a layout group on all of them, layout element, and we'll say first on the middle one, let's give it a priority. 
a higher priority than the side ones to always take precedence. And we'll say preferred width, right? And we can just say we always want it to take up about that much room. Okay. And now that is actually all you need already to handle that kind of thing. Okay. Um, alternatively, well, not alternatively, in parallel, you can say, all right, I want this one here to take up more room than this one. You can give that a preferred width as well. Now, the way to think about min width, preferred width, and flexible width is min width is very rigid. So if you'll see here in preferred width, I'm adding this and it's just, it's, it's uh, making everything else smaller, but it would actually make everything else smaller to infinity, as you can see. Whereas if I now said, I want this right panel to always have at least a min width of say this, this left panel now, Preferred width is is it's it's not going to override the min width of this. Um, and in the same way, if you give them both a min width, it can actually push elements out of the array because there's now not enough room to actually f give these elements the min width. Um, and then in the same way, so min width is the strongest, and then think of this one as the secondary one. So basically all the calculations for min width will go first, and then afterwards, if there's more space available, preferred width comes into play. And then finally, after everything else is done there, then flexible width will come in. So basically it's a three-tiered approach to ensure that you've got like as much control. I've, I've never even found myself needing flexible width. Just min width and preferred width has been enough but uh, you should be able to achieve everything you want to achieve uh, with those. Lastly, I will show you how the grid layout works. So new empty, call it grid, expand to fill the size, and let's add a grid layout group on this one. So now I will add an image, let's make it cell. And now we can just add these and it will automatically arrange them in a grid and overflow them once it runs out of room. Now the grid layout is quite flexible in what you can do with it, but to, what to note first is that the cells are actually a set predetermined size by the grid layout. And as you can see here, we can actually expand them and it will, it will disregard the aspect ratio of the child. So what you can do about this is instead of having just the actual object that you want in the grids uh, displayed, you could have a an empty object. So let's call it the sprite parents, or this could be like the inventory item or the 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 weapon or or whatever. And then on the actual uh, parent there, you can add the the sprite itself let's say cell here, and then we'll make another one of those. And then this one can be a Jolteon. Jolteon. So now we just uh, duplicate those. And we say to our grid, we want them to take up more cell space. It, it will only directly affect the parent, not the child of the parent. So it will only affect the direct descendants uh, of the grid of the grid layout. You can add additional spacing to them like that if you want them more spread out on the X and Y. You can add padding to the actual left, right, up bottom of the, of the grid. And here you can change the way, the, the, the amount of columns, like right now it's flexible. So it will try to take as many columns and, and rows as it can in the space. Uh, and then it will overflow to the next ones, but you can actually set a specific column count. So for example, just two now, uh, three, and this is, this is more of like a, you're more in control. So it takes less control from the grid layout, which would normally automatically overflow when it runs out of space. Now you're saying that you want it to have nine columns. So it's going to have nine columns regardless, uh, in the same way, uh, the, the row count. So I want this to have nine rows, so it's going to give you nine rows, okay? And in the same way as the horizontal and vertical layout group, we can change the alignment. So let's say we want them all in the middle center. 
and we can say flexible count again. And then what we have here is a way to say, do we want these grid items to be flowing horizontally or vertically? Like, do we want them to fill up the horizontal plane first and then overflow or the vertical plane first and then overflow? So we can change that here. So, and I'll, I'll show you here. So right now we're filling up the vertical plane first. Whereas if we change it to horizontal, it's going to fill up the horizontal plane first. Okay. Now that is just about everything I wanted to show you about layout groups. You should be able to now uh, play around with a little bit and make your own UIs. Uh, it can be a little bit fiddly and sometimes you have to be a little bit hacky with it. Uh, but ultimately, um, I've found that I've always been able to achieve what I wanted to achieve with the Unity uh, UI system. It just sometimes takes a while of, of just messing around with it. So if you learned anything, give it a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.